Integration by substitution. Substitution is one such weapon which can help you conquer most of the integration. And now to understand this topic better, I have divided this concept under two videos. Today we begin with integration by substitution using trigonometry. So let's get started. We already know the formula of integral of sin x and integral of cos x. Now to explore the integral of remaining four trigonometric functions, let's do that using substitution. Now to understand this concept better, if you come across your integral with any of these forms, that means if you see a function which is getting multiplied with its derivative this way, or the function is in the denominator with its derivative right in the numerator, or maybe you have a function which is hidden within another function, but if you substitute it, you get the derivative right there. So in short, one thing is important that in each of the cases, the derivative is right next to the function. What do we exactly do with this? You put your function to be a new variable, let's say t. In short, you are substituting your function with a new variable. But keep in mind, you are substituting that function for which the derivative is already present. So, now when we differentiate both sides with respect to x, we get f dash x is equal to dt upon dx, which becomes f dash x dx is dt. Now, we can take any of these forms, let's say the first one, here the integral transforms to your function is replaced with t into f dash x dx now becomes dt. And if you can recollect this form, this would be t raised to power 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus 1 plus c. That is t square upon 2 plus c and now in the end, do not forget to substitute your t back. That is, that is the answer is half of fx whole square plus c. If you want to recollect any of the formulas in integration, please refer to my first video on introduction to integrals. The link you would find in the description box or you can also find the video by clicking at the i button on the top right corner. Similarly, your second function gets transformed to dt upon t for which the answer would be once again log of mod t plus c and likewise here you create another function for which you know the derivative already. Now, let's see how we use this substitution to derive the formulas for these trigonometric functions. Now taking your integral tan x, we all know we can write this as integral sin x upon cos x dx. Now if you look at any of these forms and try to identify the function as well as its derivative, then if I put this cos x as t, then derivative of cos x would be minus sin x into dx is equal to dt, which means my sin x dx could be replaced with minus dt. Thus, the integral changes to minus dt upon t, which we all know 1 upon t dt is log of mod t plus c. Now, replacing back the value which is minus log of mod cos x plus c. So, either you can accept the answer this way or taking this minus sign, taking this minus sign here, here, here I am making use of property of logs in order to refer to them, please refer to logarithmic differentiation the link for the same you would find in the description box or by clicking at the i button. So this can further give us the answer log of 1 upon cos x plus c which is log mod sec x plus c.
So integral tan x could be very conveniently remembered as log mod sec x plus c. Integral of cot x could be once again written as integral of cos x dx upon sin x. Now once again you know if you put sin x as t the derivative is right there on the top. So let's do this. If we put sin x is equal to t, this would imply cos x dx is dt. So the integral now becomes dt upon t which is log mod t plus c and this time the answer was even easy because you, you get it directly as log of mod sin x plus c. So integral cortex dx is log mod sin x plus c. Look at integral of secant x. Now if I go by the same logic and change this to 1 over cos x dx, you do not know how to proceed further. Well, you can do this with a small trick. What you do instead is multiply and divide with sec x plus tan x. And now see the magic happen. The moment you open the brackets on the top, you get secant square x plus secant x tan x. And of course the denominator is sec x plus tan x. Quite surprisingly by just multiplying and dividing with one expression, you have created the form where one, if you put denominator as a function, well, your numerator is the derivative. So, let's do that. So, now putting secant x plus tan x as t, the derivative for secant x was secant x tan x and the derivative for tan x is secant square x whole dx is equal to dt. So, the integral now gets transformed to dt upon t which is once again log mod t plus c on replacing back the value of t you get log of mod secant x plus tan x plus c. At times to apply your substitution you might have to multiply and divide with something to get into the form. Now how do you exactly get to know? Well, the more experience you gain out of questions, the better you get at this. Let's explore integral of cosecant x dx now. Your integral cosecant x dx has a similar fate. You have to find that expression which would work brilliantly when you multiply the numerator and denominator with it. Taking q from the previous question, this time you can try multiplying with cosecant x minus cot x. The moment you multiply with this expression, again the things fall into place. Let's see. On opening the brackets, we get this expression and once again, if you substitute the denominator as t, the derivative is right there on the top. Put cosecant x minus cot x as t. Derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x cot x and derivative for cot x is minus cosecant square x so you get a plus sign here if we compare it with what is on the top here it is absolutely the same so integral once again changes to dt by t which would be log mod t plus c which gives the answer finally as log of mod cosecant x minus cot x plus c Please have a look. So I have listed all the formulae which we have just arrived. Now let's try to make use of these and try cracking few questions. Looking at the very first question it says integral of 1 upon under root of 1 plus cos 2x dx. Now this segment will require you to revise your trigonometric formulae which you probably did in your previous class. So we know we can write cos 2x in terms of cos as 2 cos square x minus 1. So this one, so that means your 1 plus cos 2x 
gives you 2 cos square x. Now replacing these value, now replacing this value here, your integral changes to 2 cos square x dx. This 1 upon root 2 being a constant can come out and here we will be left with dx upon cos x which becomes 1 upon root 2 integral of secant x dx which gives us the answer from here as 1 by root 2 log of mod sec x plus tan x plus c. Please note in the ideal situation your square root of cos square x should give you mod cos x. However, here we are working with the assumption that your cos x falls into the positive quadrant. Look at the second question. This time you might not find it very straightforward. If you try expanding sine of x minus a using the formula, it won't help since it's in the denominator. However, had it been in the numerator, then expansion and separating the terms would have worked. So what do we do here? One trick which works brilliantly is simply express your x as x minus a plus a. Now treating this as one term expand. This gives us sine a cos b plus cos a sin b upon sin of x minus a. Now just separate out the terms. So for the first expression we are only left with integral cos a dx plus in the next expression you see cos of x minus a upon sin of x minus a gives us cot of x minus a into sin a. Now cos a being a constant could be pushed out and likewise sin and likewise sin a comes out and you are left to integrate cot of x minus a into dx. So now integral of dx is simply x, sin a stays as it is, integral of cot of x minus a, you can apply this formula. Keep in mind here x is a linear expression. So even if I replace it with x minus a, it works well. So this becomes log mod sine of x minus a plus c. Alternatively in this question, you could have taken x minus a as t. So this becomes now, on differentiating both sides, you get dx is dt. So, how does that help? Well, your integral now changes to, in place of your x, you have t plus a. And here, we have simply sin t dt. And now, once again, you can open the expression in the numerator, separate out the terms, you would get this kind of answer and in the end replace back your t. Look at the third question here. Well, you do not know what to do exactly. Even if you try changing everything into sine and cos, still you will be confused what to do. But you know we are dealing with integration by substitution. So the question is, can you look for the function whose derivative is present right in the numerator? Yes, you can. If you, if you see your tan x equal to t would give you secant square x dx as dt. So if we assume tan x as t, the answer is secant square x dx is dt. But hey, if I want to simplify my question further, and rather take the entire 3 plus tan x as t, integral still stays the same. This acts as the function whose derivative is right on the top. This transforms the integral to dt upon t. Isn't that so simple? The answer is log mod t plus c and do not forget to replace back your t as log mod 3 plus tan x 
plus C. Look at the fourth question and once again wear your thinking caps and try to look for the function and its derivative. You might feel if I take sine square x as t then the derivative is 2 sin x into cos x dx as dt which is your sine to x. But even if you take cos square x as t you get 2 cos x into minus sin x dx as dt which would still give you the answer. So what exactly do we do? Well you have three options. Either take sin square x as t or cos square x as t or even better take the entire thing as t and let's see how it works magically. So the moment you put a square sin square x plus b square cos square x as t differentiating with respect to x this is just a constant this one gives us 2 sin x cos x once again this is just b square differentiating this gives us 2 cos x into minus sin x whole dx is dt so this gives us a square into sin 2x minus minus sine take in common minus b square into again sine 2x dx is dt. Well, this gives you sine 2x dx is equal to 1 upon a square minus b square into dt. And trust me, this substitution works the best. Now let's replace everything in our question. We get i is equal to 1 upon a square minus b square could be pulled out since it has no x involved dt upon t. Isn't this question super easy now? You get 1 upon a square minus b square into log mod t plus c and now don't forget to replace back your t. Have a look at your final answer. From this video, I am introducing a new section which is DIY. Yes, do it yourself. At the end of each video, I will be asking you one, two or maybe more questions to see how you respond. Feel free to comment or send in your solutions on my email ID. I can go on and on and on with the questions but let's take a pause and give you some time to revise, explore and practice. I will see you with the next video. Till then, do not forget to like, share and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. I will see you with the continuation part. Until then, bye-bye.